Are you ready? Uh? I am ready. Uh -huh. <laughs> Akaba, welcome to One Africa family. We're going to keep it very brief. You are now being escorted home to the land of your natural ancestral inheritance. Akwaba is how we say welcome home. First and foremost, what I'd like to do is show some love to one of our ambassadors. One of the ambassadors that have made more than, I don't know how many trips you... We, don't, we, we, we celebrated the 10th year, we 16th year of this brother on the Overground Railroad, Brother Bomani. Show the brother some love, that put your hands and show this brother. Going back like, you know, continuously, and we know, we know, we know, we know, we're not easy to deal with. We know that the rules and the regulations and jumping through the hoops is not easy. So One Africa, we also gave him the golden key to this land, to this place. He got access to the ancestors, to the spirit, to the mysteries. He's not just an ordinary, because you can't be ordinary to do what it is that he does. He's fortified by those who are on the land, which is why he's able to keep it. Do you mind me telling you a secret, bro? Because you know, yeah, but we let y'all know, this ain't no joke business. This is how we do what we do. We are doing this in spirit, and you are coming home. So, in short, we want you to enjoy yourselves. If you have any issues, remember, you are here in Ghana, and you traveled across these waters, and you fulfilled prophecy. So whatever the case may be, you landed in paradise. If, if it's too hot, if it's too cold, if it ain't enough water, if it ain't just right, just let us know. And we will try to tweak it for you. And if we can't tweak it, take it like that. Because you came across these waters and you're going to be all right. Can I get an amen? I show. I show. Speak, speak, but Yes, family. Yes, family. I appreciate everybody's uh, energy. Uh, I know it's uh, one of those uh, things where it's just a whole lot to this process, especially when you uh, look at the details and we're ready to join a journey from getting the visa, getting organized, us uh, conferencing and talking, to us uh, driving around a country, a big country like Ghana, we just drove around four diff different regions. And uh, the move logistically, like, you know, we're the, 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 the like naval operation is smooth, smoothly and everything. But uh, the, the main thing we just want to let everybody know that uh, One Africa is uh, is family, and you know we keep it strong, and we want to make sure that you have the greatest time. It's the last three days, and honestly, we saved the last three days, the best for last. Uh, so in this time, because we'll be here tomorrow, right? Yeah, until she get here, well, me and Shabazz is holding it down. And so, so family, the dinner is going to be coming out. Uh, enjoy dinner and. With it, we're gonna get uh, things going to where once you're finished, we'll just have a not long night of this jamming and connecting because tomorrow is an ancestral day where we're gonna go to the Holocaust dungeon in your fresh white. So let's uh, do the celebration to get ready for that celebration. Look, family, One Africa is a health resort. We have doctors, we have chiropractors, we have massage therapists that can do feet, your back, your necks, your hands, whatever thing it is, the crick, the crack, the cross, we can make it happen for y'all, so just ask about it, and one of the therapists, one of the natural paths who are around will also assist you. When you got some time, just put an appointment in. You see some of the, the lounge chairs, you see our therapy room, whatever the thing it is that we, you are in paradise and we want y'all to make you feel kings and you are home. The food is coming out on the table as you see right here. We're gonna diligently go. We're gonna let the elders go first as we normally do. And the brother definitely with the most elder brother right there, recognizing himself, we're recognizing you now. We definitely put our elders in front of us. So one of the things that we can just say to the family, how you got it, how you got it. You got it first in line, don't worry about it. Everybody's going to be fed. We're going to have a good time for the next three days. We want you all to just, whatever the thing it is that you desire, you see a lot of people in the yard. We are family business. I want to call my brother manager, Brother Kwame, our great guru, 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 storyteller from L.A., Oakland, California. 
to close out the opening and just show y'all who what we do. Ah, Greetings. Akwaba. Akwaba. Welcome home. And uh, I want to know, I want you to know that I'm, I'm really humbled right now just to receive you all. This is such a wonderful, wonderful gift. And I won't tell you what your experience should be like in Ghana. Everybody gets to have their own. I will share with you just a little bit of mine. I came to Ghana two years ago, 2017, after having what I call a near-death experience. And I didn't know what I was coming to do when I got when I came. I just knew I wanted to come to Africa. And when I got here, I had a couple of experiences that really changed me and let me know this is where I needed to be. So I'm just going to share a story. And um, in Ghana, the phone system is a little bit different. I don't know if you guys are using your phone, your cell phones, but it's very pricey to make the long distance calls when you call back to the States on your regular AT&T or Sprint, whatever it is. So they told me to get a Ghana phone, and so I got a little Ghana phone. And the Ghana phone requires like a, a little stretch card and you put minutes, it's like a prepaid phone. So, you know, I'm, a, I'm an elder and my grandchildren do all that stuff for me. So I'm not really phone savvy. I got a little nine-year-old granddaughter that takes care of her granddad. So when I get to Ghana, I needed help. I needed help with my phone. I didn't know how to use my phone. So I go to the cell phone store to get help with my phone. And while I was standing in there, an elder lady came past me. And I was like the sixth or seventh person in line and she walked right to the front with a big bag. She handed it to the clerk. And the clerk took the bag and he turned to us and said, excuse me, and he began to take the money that you collected all day and put it in the bag. And I'm standing there watching, I'm from Oakland, California. And you don't show people your money. You just don't show people your money. You just, nobody gonna see my money. You ain't gonna know what kind of, when I have money. But I'm watching this young man take these big stacks of money and put it in his bag. And I'm like, what is wrong with you? We showed everybody this money. It was a lot of money. It was maybe 200,000 Ghana dollars. Wow. It was a lot of money. And then the lady took the bag and turned around and walked out right past me out the front door. There wasn't no armored car, no security guard, with no police officer, with no pistol. She just walked right past me. Now, I'm tripping. I, I'm tripping. I'm like, God, this is this this can't be true. So I couldn't take it. I had to look and see who was outside waiting for the old lady. Somebody had to be out there. And I look out, and she's walking down the street by herself. Wow. With this big bag of money. Damn. Excuse me, but that's what I'm saying. God, this is this ain't this ain't right. So I was tripping. So I went to where I was living with my host to tell him this story. And my host was there, but his wife was there. So I was telling his sister, this Ghanaian woman, this story about the woman coming into the cell phone store and getting this money and just walking down the street with this money. And she looking at me, and I could tell she she wasn't she wasn't getting it. Okay, she wasn't, she wasn't getting it. I'm like, listen, the lady's just walking up all this money. I said, finally I said, somebody could just push that little lady down and get that bag of money and just be gone. And she looked at me with a look that was different. And she just leaned in real close and she said, no one thinks like that in Ghana. Wow. Wow. And I, and I looked at her and she was looking at me like, Something is wrong with you, right? And I'm like, oh my God, I'm the only person in Ghana thinking that somebody might do something to this old, this elder. Mm. So I'm sharing that story to let you know that what I realized was that there was something wrong with me. I brought, I brought Oakland, California to Ghana. I needed to leave it because what I what I developed in Oakland, I don't I don't need it here. This is the most beautiful, loving place I've ever been, is Ghana. The people here are the most beautiful, loving people I've ever, ever seen in my life, in Ghana. And so I'm just telling you my story. You might not, you might not be like me. You might not be this sick, right? You, nobody might not ever look at you like that lady looked at me that day, right? But I'm sharing that because I love Ghana. I love being in Ghana. And I would love for all of you to have a wonderful experience in God. And one of the keys to that might be to remember that you're not in Oakland, California. Nobody's trying to kill you. 
in God. Nobody's trying to do anything to you in Ghana. People in Ghana are the most loving, beautiful people I have ever, ever witnessed in my life. And so I welcome you here for your experience in Ghana. And I want to shoot a shout out and acknowledge the brother Bomani. I love this brother, the work that he's doing. Bringing people home. What a wonderful thing to do. Bring, bring us home. This is, this is a home. This is the land of our fathers. And so with that, I just want to close and say you are, you have made it. I consider myself, uh, I tell them, they don't know about I'm a runaway slave. The hound dogs are looking for me. You know? But they're not going to find me because I done made it. I done escaped. And so we're home. Welcome home. Thank you.